before going to analyze the echo report we should have the views of various transthoracic echocardiogram this is called fate which is focus assess transthoracic echocardiogram here you have four primary views one is the subcostal followed by apical then third one is the parasternal and the fourth one is the pleural scanning in addition one more view is there which is the suprasternal view to assess the great vessel here you can see the subcostal view second is apical third is the parasternal and fourth is the pleural and in addition you have the suprasternal view to assess the great vessels now coming to subcostal here you place the probe in the subcostal part and you cross the liver to examine the four chambers of the heart here you have the right ventricle right atrium left atrium and the left ventricle here you can see the this is the right ventricle the tricuspid valve right atrium and here you have the left ventricle and the left atrium in this view you can even look at the interatrial septum and the interventricular septum along with the four chambers of the heart next comes the subcostal view for the ivc diameter assessing the volume preload of the heart this view is very very important all you do is measure the ivc diameter and the collapsibility index of the inferior vena cava now coming to the apical view you place the probe in the apical part and you cut the heart at three different angle you move the probe counter clockwise to get three different view in the first view you get a nice four chamber view here you can see the left ventricle left atrium right ventricle and the right atrium along with the both the valves mitral and the tricuspid valve your pictorial representation is here then as you rotate the probe counter clockwise at 90 degrees you get the two chamber view here you have the left ventricle mitral valve and the left atrium and this is the anterior wall and this will be the inferior wall then as you rotate the probe another 90 degrees you get what is the three chamber view here you have the left atrium left ventricle and here you have the aortic valve and the aorta and you can have the right ventricle here so that is the three chamber view now coming to the parasternal view where you place the probe directly over the heart and the probe light will be towards the right shoulder now you place the probe over the heart here cardiac structure is being seen here you have the left ventricle this is the left atrium and you have the mitral valve in between this is the right ventricular outflow tract this is the ascending aorta and this is the descending aorta and here is the pleural space this is the parasternal long axis view right ventricular outflow tract left ventricular cavity aortic valve mitral valve and the la this is the descending aorta and this is the ascending aorta there is a small pleural collection this view is very important in measurement mode here you can measure the dimension of the right ventricle you can measure the septum you can measure the posterior wall dimension of the left ventricle and if you place a cursor across the aorta you can measure the aortic diameter and the la diameter this aortic la diameter is very very important in assessment of the left ventricle then comes the parasternal short axis view here you can see the lv at the level of mitral valve at the level of papillary muscle and the contraction this is very important in assessing the walls of the left ventricle and also you can look at the aortic valve all the three cusps of the aortic valve can be seen with the inflow to the right ventricle as well as outflow you can measure the pa diameter as well as the right and left 
branch pulmonary arteries. Next comes the pleural view where you place the probe on the sidewards and you have to cross the spleen and lung to look for any pleural collection. You cross the spleen and the lung and you can see for some volume management. The last view is the suprasternal view. You place on the suprasternum. This is the ascending iota. This is the descending iota. And this one is the brachiocephalic and you followed by left common carotid and the left subclavian artery. Now coming to the various parameters in the echo report. The first and foremost which we see is the ejection fraction. What is this ejection fraction? It is nothing but end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume which is the stroke volume divided by end diastolic volume. What is end diastole? The end diastole is nothing but where your mitral valve is open and end systole is when your mitral valve is closed. You measure the volume by Simpson method in end diastole and end systole and calculate the ejection fraction. The normal ejection fraction is around 55 to 75 percent. 